What's up, guys? Hey, when you're pricing your agency services, especially within the model of SaaS, there's a big mistake that agencies make by jumping way too far ahead and trying to jump to what the price is. Instead of jumping to the price, you got to start with the prospect and reverse engineer your price and your profit. Enjoy the clip. I'm playing around with trying to help out real estate agents. So w- would you say go keep the pricing the same as I was trying to price a service as me hiring a media buyer to run ads for me or sell this cheaper and try to do more of a volume approach? That's a really good question. And really what this comes down to. So <clears throat> I heard that one of my favorite new phrases in marketing is you need to understand what makes an audience tick, makes them click and makes them stick. Okay. It's a moniker that should be tattooed on everybody's forehead. So when you look in the mirror, you're like, okay, where am I at? Where am I at today? Do I know what makes them click? Because it's so interesting when you look at, when you look at what makes a business really like work, really fly off the shelves. Yeah. It is something that nobody really talks about. It's product market fit. Yeah. Okay. And I'll share a quick little story and then I'll get back to your question, which is how do you price it? How do you present it? All that kind of thing. I tell the story. In fact, I posted today of all days, I just posted this in the Facebook group where I became a loan originator at the age of 23, 24, something like that, because a bunch of friends told me they were going to send me all these deals. Long story short, they didn't send me any deals. So here I am. I burn all my bridges. I don't have any money coming in. I quit my nine to five or my, yeah, my nine to five job. And I don't have any way to make money. And so my manager, my, the loan originator manager would say, just go to real estate agent offices and just, they'll send you business, whatever. I'm like, okay. What I found in doing that is they all wanted somebody who was older, more experienced. They all had people already. They, they just wanted to get a free meal out of me and I couldn't get anybody's business. Like, dude, man, I like either I suck at selling or this is way harder than I thought it was going to be. And it was a combination of everything. So one day I'm sitting in the lobby and I'm thumbing through this magazine, this real estate magazine, and all of the real estate agents in this magazine have listings of these homes. I'm like, man, if I originated that loan, I'd make like 10 grand and so on and so forth until I hit on this page. And it was Christina McNeil. She was a real estate agent and she was listing first time home buyers. And her buyers were Spanish speakers. I could see because all of the headlines of the Se habla Espanol, like everywhere through throughout all of the pages. Yeah. I'm like, okay, wait. So she's a real estate agent. Her buyers are home, first time home buyers and they're bilingual. Well, I know people don't want to do first time home buyer loans because they're more work. They're harder to do. So I've got an advantage there. I've got time. I don't have money. So I got an advantage there. She probably has to translate for them because they speak Spanish. I speak Spanish. So I'm like, let me just see if I can, like, what I can do. So I reached out to her. I said, hey, Christina, my name is Sam Carlson. I specialize in first-time home buyer loans, and I speak Spanish. So if you have anybody that's having a hard time getting approved and you don't want to step in the middle and whatever, I'm here as a resource. Boom, five deals that day. So what changed? I had this one approach where I was going to real estate agents. I was doing the same thing. I was going to them. I was saying, I can do any kind of loan you want, yada, yada. I was doing that and I was getting nothing, getting nowhere. All of a sudden, I go to this lady who has a very unique, specific problem, a very unique, specific prospect, and I provide a very unique, specific solution. And then all of a sudden, boom, I never had to sell again. And all of a sudden, also, by the way, I became a genius at selling. Did I become a genius at selling or did I become a genius, just a genius, at finding a unique problem that just needed a solution? And I just happened to be the person there to fog up the mirror. Because honestly, anybody could have come in and said those same, made that same proposition and they would have won. Okay. So the reason that I, I pre-frame your response is I think a lot of times we start out by asking the wrong questions. Like, how do I price it? What do I do? All that kind of stuff. That's down the road, maybe step five, six, seven. Okay. 
Because if, if it's about what makes them tick, click, and stick, who are we talking to in terms of what makes them tick? And with this story, with this particular example, what made her tick was, okay, she's frustrated that she wants to do more deals, but it's hard to get her buyers approved. That's, a, that's something that is ever present in her environment. She wants a simpler solution to do this. Boom. I'm tapping right into what makes her tick. Okay. My solution, when she heard it, it was dog whistle. It was like, woo, everybody, like everybody else didn't hear that. If I'd gone in and said that same pitch to all these other people at those brokerages that I was saying to, they would have been like, I don't care. But she cared. All right. So that's where you got to start. Yeah. You got to start with who are you, who specifically are you talking to in the real estate community? This is where everybody goes off the rails right at the very beginning because they don't ask that question. Yeah. I also figured this out a little bit when I was, I remember before, like when I first started, when I was start, starting like messaging on Instagram and, and Facebook and doing cold calls, I'm like, huh, my, my response rate isn't the best. It seems like some of these people have no money. And then I found out a little, a little trick to find better quality people. And then when I started talking to them, it was more percentage wise. It I was able to talk to them because they had some money to play with. So I'm like, whoa, like that, it depends on who I'm talking to now. I learned a big lesson from that. Yes, it really that does. I have to find the, I have to find somebody that has enough of money and that wants to keep pushing ahead. And then those people, what, whatever I sell them, will be easier to sell whatever I want to sell them. I noticed this very quickly. And you remember like in the Karate Kid, how Mr. Miyagi was like, wax on, wax off. And he was yeah. in Danielson do all these like things. He was like, dude, why do I got to paint the fence? I don't get it. I don't understand. I got to paint the fence. It's because had he just showed him how to do the this move to block something, he never would have known the exact motion to do it the right way. Yeah. And this is what a lot of people do when they try and jump ahead to the pricing, for example. If you haven't painted the fence, then by the time you get to actually doing the move, you're not going to do it. Yeah, yeah. And so so, so I know that's a metaphor. It's probably a, ter a terrible analogy. But the point is this. What do you really need to do in order to answer that question easily? Number one, you need to talk. You need to identify that prospect. Okay. Yeah. That sub niche you need to identify them. And then you need to talk to them offline. Like you need to actually understand what makes them tick. This is another thing that people do wrong. They want to write ads and the ads are too broad. They're, they're, they're not specific enough. I see this all of the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. In fact, there's somebody locally here in my market. God bless them. They're running one of our ads for agencies, like the ones that we provide in Upex and they're doing it right out of the box. I don't teach people to do that. I teach them to, those are awesome features. Okay. And if you look at the way, if you look at the case study that Forrest Adsit and I did, he took that idea, but he narrowed it down to a very specific type of insurance agent, which is what made it work. That's how he got 35 people in two weeks. So <clears throat> ask yourself who you're talking to, make sure they're very unique and very specific. And by the way, where did Facebook start their business? Did they start by going to all of us? No. no. They started with college students. They started on one college campus, then two, then so on and so forth. So if Facebook, one of the hugest companies on planet Earth, if they started with a unique specialized avatar. That means you should too. Yeah. Why are you any different? Yeah. And so start out at the first step, get people to buy. Once you get them to start buying from you, like face to face, that kind of thing, yeah. then your ads will start to work. And all of a sudden you'll be like, Hey, I'm really good at writing ads. Did I get really good at sales? No, I didn't. All I did was put myself in a winning formula, a specific person, a specific problem, and a specific unique solution. Mm -hmm.